So welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about classes and object. So when you talk about Java, so Java basically follows this concept of OOPs and in OOPs, the most important part is class and object. Now just imagine we have a building here or, or a tower. Now, so for this building, to build this building, we require a plan, right? We require a blueprint. So even if you think you want to build this, the first question is how to build that. So we require a blueprint, right? So build this building, we require a blueprint. Now this building is an object. Okay, just imagine this is an object. To build any object, your JVM needs a structure or a blueprint. And that blueprint will be your class. So what is class? Class defines the structure of an object. It defines the working of an object. So if you can imagine an object, imagine object as a, a phone. So every phone will have two things. A phone, your phone knows something and your phone does something. So when you, when you say your phone knows something, the it's the structure of your phone, the color of your phone, and then we have a logo behind. If it's an iPhone, just imagine that Apple logo there. So that's the structure of a phone, right? So how Java look, how object looks. Then what object does, right? Even if you have an iPhone, if you cannot call someone, will you, will you use that iPhone? Maybe for show off, right? But if you have an object, you have to use that object. So every object will have a behavior. So to define what object knows and what object does, we require a blueprint. So in this blueprint, we can define what is the behavior and what is the values. So you can see the class structure there. Okay, so just behind the blueprint. So we have a class structure. So using that class, we can create this object. So that is object and class in Java. So once you know the basic syntax and how to use different things in Java, like if else, for loop, variables, Let's talk about some real power of Java, which is objects, because Java is object oriented, right? So if you know the basics of programming, now you can directly jump to the OOPS concept. Now what, what OOPS says is everything should be an object. In fact, as you see in the last video where we have talked about how do we create an object, what is class, how, what exactly we need for that, we need a blueprint so that we can create the instance. So once we know all those terms, let's start with the uh, real thing here. So what we'll do is we'll create a calculator. Again, normally uh, when you talk about uh, working with your first code of object, we always build a calculator. So let's build a calculator. We'll say, well, let's get a class because to create anything new in Java, we need to create a class. So we'll say this is class calc. So when you want to create object of it, it is very simple. Now we can simply say calc obj. Now this calc obj is called as reference. So this is not the object, but this is just a reference. So this obj here is a reference. What we'll do now is let's create object of it. Now the only way to create the object is with the help of new keyword because new keyword is, is responsible to allocate the memory. Now how much memory you need that will be defined by the constructor. Again, we'll talk about this thing later. Once we start with the topic of constructors, we'll, we'll try to explore this more. So what we are doing is we are creating a reference for calc and then we are saying obj equal to new calc. This is the object. So this line here, the green lines which I'm selecting here, that is your object. And this obj is just a reference. So when you, when you write this line, it returns you the object of type calc. And that's why we say calc obj equal to new calc. You can write this in one line. So write two lines, we can write it in one line, something like this. So we don't have to waste this two lines. This is how you create a class and this is how you create an object. So you can call class as the blueprint and object as the real instance. Now what we'll do is, uh, let's have some things here because what is object? Object knows something. So object knows something and object does something. So when you say object knows something, that means in your class, you have some variables. Let's say we have int num1, then we have int num2, and then we have int result. So we have these three values. So this is what object knows, right? So when you say you have a calculator, you will, you will put some values and then you will be getting the output of output for that. Example, when you say three into five, so you got those three, two values, three and five, and then you got 15 in result. Again, you have to perform some operation for that, but that's how you can create a variables, right? So when you say object knows something, we're talking about the data, the variables. Then what next? Object does something. So object does something with the help of methods. Now, how do you put a method here? So we'll simply say, so the way you create a method is, let's say I want to perform an operation. Let's say this is operation. Now again, it can be any operation. Uh, we'll say simply perform. And when you say we have a method in perform, so how it works, we have to say perform. That's the method name. We have to provide this uh, round bracket. This is how you define that you're working with a method. 
And this is the bracket open back, bracket close. So whenever you define a method, you have to make sure that you open the bracket and you close the bracket. Now in this method, you can perform some action. But to define a method, we have to put some extra things. Now those extra things is the written type. This method is not reading anything, so we are writing void. Again, we'll talk about this later. What are different written types we can use, how to return a value from the method. But time to remember, we have void perform. And I want to access this from anywhere, so let me write this public. Again, we'll, we have a total discussion how to access things later. So we have public void perform. Remember, this thing is a written type, and this is the access modifier. So we have a perform method here. So this is your method name, which is perform. And what we can do here is we can say result equal to num1 plus num2. So once you got the values of num1 and num2, we can actually add those values here. And then we can fetch the value of result. Now question arises: how do you access these variables or these methods from this main method? Because see, whenever you execute the code, the first line which will, which will get executed is this line, the main function or the method. So this main method is the first statement which will get executed. And you have to make sure that you are executing everything step by step. So when you say you're executing this line, that means you have created the object. Now once you create the object, uh, in the back end, there, 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 there are lots of stuff which, get, which happens, uh, which we'll be talking about later. But remember, whenever you create an object, it will load lots of stuff into memory. It will load your variables, it will load your methods in the memory. Now what next? Now once you got the object, let's assign the value to num1. I want to assign the value to num1 as 3. So what I will do is I will simply say num1 equal to 3. Uh, but that's not the case here. The problem is, so num1 is declared inside calc and we are using that, that ob we are using that num1 inside object demo. Now can we use it directly? And the answer is no. Now since we have two different class, we cannot directly access the variable. To access this num1 which is declared here, we need to make sure that we are using obj dot. So obj is a reference, right? So we have to, whenever you want to refer to a variable, we need to use the object reference there. In this case, which is obj. Now what next? Let's say assign, I want to assign value to num2. Same applies here. So we have to say obj dot num2. Let's assign 5. So we got these two values here. Now let me just print the value of result. So I will say obj dot result. And now if you can see, I am I'm putting those two values, num1 and num2, 3 and 5. And then I'm trying to print the result. Now by default, if you run this code, without performing any action, you can see we are getting the value as zero. It's because by default, the value of result here is zero. Now this is not the case in C programming, right? In C programming, we get garbage values. Okay, so in C programming, if you don't assign the value to a, to a variable, it gives you a garbage value. But in Java, it doesn't happen that way. In Java, we get all the integer values will be getting a value of zero. Now, who is responsible to clean your garbage? That we'll see later. We have a separate topic on that. And that topic is called as garbage collection, which we'll see in this chapter itself. When you are trying to print the result value, it is, it is giving you zero, right? Because we have not assigned the value. So what we'll do is, we will not assign the value, right? We will simply perform an action. We'll say obj.perform. Now, once you say obj.perform, it will call this method. And this method is adding those two values, num1 and num2, which is 3 and 5 which is 8 and it is getting assigned to result. And now if I run this code, you can see we got the value as 8. So that 8 is the value of result. So that's how you use a class and the object. So first of all, you have to get a class. Now class can have two things, the variables and the methods. So this is variables and this is methods. And the way to access those is with the help of object. So in order to use variables and methods, we have to get the object. We can assign the values like this. We can call a method by using the object reference. And then we can print the value as we want. So that's how you create a class and object. In fact, we can create multiple objects here that we'll see in the next video.